Hey Bass Fanatics, welcome back to Fish Den 365. I'm Den Herring. This channel is all about the art and science of bass fishing and today we're going to have a little fun. We're going to test your knowledge about bass. How much do you really know about bass and the science of bass? That's what it's going to be about today and the way we're going to test that knowledge is a 10 question quiz, true or false questions, and I'm going to get started in a minute. So you may want to pause the video, get a pen and paper so you can write your answers down. This is going to be a very informative video because the true and false questions are designed to dispel some myths about bass and also just help you learn a little bit more about the science of bass. We're going to find out how much you really know about bass. Number one, true or false, largemouth bass love to eat toad and frog tadpoles. Number two, bass have the ability to remember a negative experience. Number three, in taste tests, largemouth bass prefer garlic over worm extract, sugar, anise, table salt, and prey salt. Number four, bass learn faster than carp. Number five, oil-based scents never have and never will be true attractants, but they make great masking agents for repulsive odors and tastes. Number six, insect repellent with DEET does not repel bass. Number seven, true or false, the active ingredient in many sunscreens, PABA, otherwise known as amino benzoic acid, is repulsive to bass. Number eight, true or false, gas and motor oil is noticeably repulsive to bass. Number nine, in strike response test, a two-tone lure, silver and black, scored no higher than any single color of white, black, or any of the colors in the rainbow. And number 10, true or false, the preferred temperature of largemouth bass is 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, before we get into the answers on this quiz, I wanted to show you where the information is coming from. It's coming from a book called Knowing Bass, and that book was written by Keith A. Jones, Ph.D. Now, Keith Jones had worked with Berkeley for many years. He was the chief scientist that was responsible for making Berkeley lures more attractive to bass by appealing to a number of their senses, whether that was sight, scent, or smell. This is an excellent book. This book is no longer in publication and has become so valuable it's selling for $3,000. Okay, I exaggerate a little bit, but it does take a little more than $30 to buy this book. On Amazon, I think you can get it for about 200 bucks. I will put a link to Amazon and this book in the description of this video. Okay, the first question was, largemouth bass love to eat toad and frog tadpoles. And the answer to that is false. Let me read an excerpt from the book here. It says here, many common toad species possess specialized skin glands which when bitten release a hefty dose of rather foul-tasting substance into an attacker's mouth. The repellent is enough to send a bass's taste buds reeling in dismay. The conflict between what looks scrumptious but tastes like rot can be exasperating. In one reported instance, a largemouth spent a frustrating meal time trying to eat a single American tadpole, a species endowed with a respectable dose of skin repellent. The sight of the wiggling tadpole was enough to drive the bass insane with desire, but the tadpole's taste was beyond what the bass could stand. The bass became inextricably struck between sucking in the alluring tadpole on sight and on taste spewing the nasty critter right back out. After 20 or more tries, the bass, with puckered lips and crossed eyes, finally gave up, having learned a valuable lesson in croaker cuisine. The tadpole was left to swim dizzily away, glad to be alive, though somewhat perturbed at having played the role of an oral yo-yo. If the taste of toad tadpoles is unpleasant, bullfrogs must taste like death warmed over. So repugnant, so nauseating, so utterly disgusting is essence of bullfrog that bass have actually preferred to starve rather than chomping down on a thick mass of bullfrog tadpoles swimming beneath their very noses. It wouldn't have mattered much if the bass had been less discriminating, dietetically speaking. Bullfrogs don't sit well on a bass's stomach, and after a pained bout of gastrointestinal dysfunction, any green-faced bass that made the mistake of eating a bullfrog would end up spilling its guts anyway. Question number two. Bass have the ability to remember a negative experience. That is true, and it has been proven in a number of different tests. 
In one study, the learning rates of several popular game fish were directly compared by measuring how quickly each species learned to avoid an electrical shock. As expected, all species scored poorly in the initial training session. But with additional training, every species but yellow perch continually improved their scores. Some species like striped bass, carp, and channel catfish learn comparatively fast, whereas bass learned at a more moderate rate. Of the three species of bass tested, smallmouths and spotted bass outperform largemouths, which in turn edge out bluegills and northern pike. The fact that bass have learned to avoid negative stimuli has been confirmed by many fishermen and their experiences, including my own. For example, if you go to a quarry that has never been fished before and is loaded with bass, they'll eat anything you throw at them. But that's not the case on highly pressured waters where bass have had seen and have negative stimuli of all different types of lures. For example, spinner baits usually do very well in spring, but as, as the season progresses, it gets harder and harder to catch fish on spinner baits in some systems. And this may be because they're learning to avoid them. Also, sounds become important. Tournament after tournament, we hear from many of the professional fishermen that in the beginning of a tournament for the first few days, rattling crankbaits and baits with rattles in them were really the ticket to catching a lot of bass. But then as the tournament progressed, they needed to go to those same baits without rattles in order to get strikes, probably because the fish were learning along the way. On top of the fact that fish can learn to avoid negative stimuli, some fish also have quite long memories. Largemouth bass have been shown to have a memory of several months or longer. Number three, in taste tests, largemouth bass preferred garlic over worm extract, sugar, anise, table salt, and prey salt. That is false. In fact, sweet and spicy flavors are not attractive to bass at all. It says here, bass are not the lovers of spicy sweet flavors that we are. When given cotton pellets or small pieces of sponge saturated with assorted flavors, bass readily eat the ones soaked in, say, a nightcrawler extract. However, sweet flavors such as sugar are almost always spit out, often within a split second, while garlic and plain table salt fare only a little better. Interestingly, salt mixes that imitate the saline content found in natural prey appear much more palatable to bass than table salt. Number four, bass learn faster than carp. That is false. Carp learn faster than bass to avoid the electrical shock stimuli. Number five, oil-based scents never have and never will be true attractants, but they make great masking agents for repulsive odors and tastes. That is actually true, and it's because oil-based scents are not water-soluble and therefore cannot disperse in the water. So bass can't smell or taste oil-based scents. However, they can be used to mask unpleasant scents and tastes to largemouth bass. When it comes to scents, in order for the fish to be able to smell it, it has to be water-soluble. In other words, it has to be able to, to dissolve in water, like this gulp alive stuff. Oh, by the way, this Berkeley gulp, it's like crack cocaine to smallmouth bass. Just saying. It's a good thing I'm not a smallmouth bass or I might be drinking this stuff right now. If it's an oil-based scent, it's not water-soluble and a fish can't smell it. I wonder if this smelly jelly is oil-based. <coughs> Number six, insect repellent with DEET does not repel bass. That is false. In the book it says, bass absolutely detest the taste of insect repellent DEET and can taste less than one part per million mixed in their food. Although DEET rapidly soaks into the skin, a single application of repellent to the hands can significantly contaminate your lures, enough to repel bass for 90 minutes or longer. Number seven, the active ingredient in many sunscreens, PABA, amino benzoic acid, is repulsive to bass. That is true, as found in page 85 of the book. Number eight, gas and motor oil is noticeably repulsive to bass. That's false, an interesting study. Neither gas nor oil, for example, is noticeably repulsive to bass. We have offered bass food dipped in straight oil only to watch them eat the coated morsel with no apparent reluctance or side effects. However, various petroleum additives, detergents for example, can transform oil products and make them offensive. Number nine, in strike response tests, a two-tone lure, silver or black, scored no higher than any single color lure of white, black, or the other colors of the rainbow. That is false. 
a two-tone lure, silver and black, scored much higher than any lure that was a single color of black, dark violet, light blue, green, white, yellow, orange, or red. It says here, do bass have a favorite color? Bass allowed to freely strike standardized crankbaits painted white, black, or one of the colors of the rainbow showed slightly less inclination to strike red and orange lures, but otherwise displayed little variation in color preference. However, a two-tone lure, silver with black, scored markedly higher. And when we look at the percent rate, the percent strike response was close to 160 for black and silver. The next best highest lure was dark violet, which was around 110. And the last question, the preferred temperature range for largemouth bass is 80 to 90 degrees. That is true, as long as there is enough oxygen in the water, Bass prefer 80 to 90 degree water temperature. Experiments were done to prove this that allowed the bass to freely swim into different zones of water with different varying water temperatures. And in every case, they preferred the 80 to 90 degree temperature range. Okay, so how did you score on the quiz? Were there any surprises? If so, comment me with what they were. I'd be, I'd be curious to hear what they are. So if you scored nine out of 10 or better, comment expert in the comments of the video. If you scored seven or eight out of 10, comment knowledgeable in the comments section of the video. If you scored six or below, tell me what the most valuable thing was that you learned in the comments of the video. If you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Also share this with your friends so that they can take the quiz too. You can have a friendly competition and see how you compare to some of your buddies. I'm Dan Herring and we'll see you next time.